My name is Eric Walters. I'm the director of STEM education at Marymount School of New York, where I teach a variety of science and technology classes. For me, the most important thing is for students to have authentic learning experiences. Uh, one of my favorite authors uh, in education is Alan November, and one of his quotes that sort of resonates with me is the idea is that teachers need to stop saying to their students, turn it in, but instead should be telling their students to publish it. So what I want my students to do is I want them to be observers of the world. I want them asking questions about what they're seeing, and then we can use those questions as a basis of developing their knowledge and understanding in the classroom. Once students have done that, I think it's really important that instead of them taking a test or doing a PowerPoint presentation, that they find ways to communicate what they've learned to the public. But it really requires a reimagining of education. We can't have students going home, reading the textbook, and answering five questions at the end of the chapter. It really requires students to synthesize what they've learned and think about how they want to communicate that information to the general public. So one project that we've been doing in my atmospheric science class for a number of years is the weekend weather forecast. And this requires the students to use their forecasting skills that they learn in class to real world situations. So students have to access current weather information, they have to analyze it, they have to come up with a forecast, and then they have to think about how they want to communicate that information to both the school community and the wider community. That forecast goes up on a weekly basis on Spotify and on YouTube, and the students learn very quickly the value of producing a good forecast and the challenges of difficult forecasts and how that impacts uh, people's weekends when they predict sunny skies and it turns out to be raining. So that's one example of students using an authentic learning experience to demonstrate their mastery and understanding of basic and advanced uh, atmospheric science concepts. In terms of my physics class, I think it's really important for students to understand how physics manifests itself in the real world. I do this, and I ask my students to do this, is that whenever they're traveling, whenever they're out in the city or they're someplace else, that they both video and record examples of physics in the real world. So I've been known to be in California and videotape um, the Ferris wheel at the Santa Monica Pier, or I'll be videotaping a um, carousel. And then for the students for their final project in my physics class, I ask them to do the same thing. And then from that, they are writing a lab based on the video and the photos that they've taken of physics in the real world. So again, they're not just learning physics in the classroom, but they're thinking about how they can use physics in the real world to create a learning experience for someone else. Because girls are underrepresented in STEM fields, I personally believe that it's important for them to have experiences where they engage in dialogue and conversation with STEM researchers and STEM professionals. So to that end, every year our students plan and host the STEMX Youth Summit, which is a one-day celebration of STEM um, it's a really great exercise for the students in project management because they have to oversee all the aspects of this one-day conference, but they also have to consider the fact that they're building a learning experience for their peers, both here in New York City and then during the pandemic when we did it virtually on Zoom. There's a lot of moving parts that they have to consider, and these are skills like soft skills, communication skills, public relations skills, that they're not going to learn in the classroom. One thing we try and promote with our students is that they belong at the table of STEM researchers and STEM professionals. So every year our students plan and host the STEM X Youth Summit. This is a one-day celebration of all things STEM with workshops, keynote speakers, and panel discussions. The most important thing about that summit is that the students are really learning project management. They're learning the soft skills of communications, public relations, uh, time management, uh, problem solving. 
but they're also really building learning experiences for their peers, whether the summit is held in person or uh, virtually. And we've been doing this for about 10 years now. And it's a challenging thing, but there, these are skills that the students are not going to be learning in the classroom. So we are continually looking for ways to build these authentic learning experiences, our curriculum. And in some ways, the classroom becomes less and less important. And what the students are doing with what they're learning outside the classroom becomes more and more important.